In the cold, contested waters of the Baltic Sea, two names define naval deterrence for the Nordic region, Sweden's RBS-15 and Norway's naval strike missile. These are not just weapons, they are statements of sovereignty. As Russia's naval presence grows and hybrid warfare pushes into the Baltic's undersea cables and coastlines, the question of who controls the sea lanes between Stockholm, Helsinki and Copenhagen is no longer theoretical. It rests on which missile can strike first, fly smarter, and survive in one of the world's most complex maritime theaters. The Baltic is a paradox. It is narrow, shallow, and heavily monitored. Every launch, every radar ping, every acoustic trace is noticed. This geography favors defenders armed with precise, mobile, anti-ship systems that can deny the sea to larger fleets. Both Sweden and Norway, longtime maritime nations, built their deterrent strategies on the same principle. Kill the ship before it closes the range. From that philosophy came two distinct design schools, Saab's RBS-15 and Kongsberg's NSM, each reflecting its nation's environment and doctrine. The RBS-15 lineage stretches back to the late Cold War, designed for Sweden's archipelago defense, a labyrinth of islands, cliffs, and radar shadows. The latest version, the RBS-15 Mark IV Gungnir, is a subsonic, long-range anti-ship and land attack missile. It weighs about 800 kilograms, carries a 200 kilogram blast fragmentation warhead, and has a range exceeding 300 kilometers, more than enough to reach across the entire Baltic from coastal launchers. Its guidance system combines inertial and GPS navigation with an active radar seeker that activates in the terminal phase. The Mark IV adds new resistance to electronic countermeasures, dual seekers for better target discrimination, and advanced flight profiles that allow pop-up attacks against ships hidden behind islands. Saab's design philosophy values range, raw destructive power, and robustness, a missile meant to fight in electronic chaos and still hit its mark. The RBS-15 is fully integrated on Sweden's Visby-class corvettes, the upcoming Pojanma-class frigates for Finland, and coastal batteries operated by Sweden and Croatia. For the Baltic context, it represents mass and reach, heavier, proven, and highly lethal, built for the fog of war that defines archipelagic combat. The Naval Strike Missile, developed by Norway's Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, reflects a very different approach. Designed in the 2000s for modern networked warfare, it is lighter, stealth-shaped, and optimized for survivability. Its range is roughly 185 to 200 kilometers depending on flight profile, but what it lacks in raw reach, it compensates with intelligence. The NSM uses an imaging infrared seeker rather than radar. Instead of sending signals that can be detected or jammed, it sees its target using a digital image database, matching ship silhouettes and ignoring decoys. This makes it almost immune to radar jamming and ideal for a saturated electromagnetic environment like the Baltic. Its low flight altitude and composite materials reduce radar and infrared signature, making it extremely hard to intercept. Another major advantage is that the NSM is fully networked. It can receive target updates mid-flight, reprogram in the air, and strike both ships and land targets. It fits perfectly into NATO's data-linked command network and has been adopted by Norway, Poland, the United States, Finland, and Germany, giving it a broad logistical ecosystem. Both missiles are modular and can be deployed from ships, trucks, or aircraft. The RBS-15 dominates Swedish naval decks, four to eight missiles per Visby Corvette, and will arm Finland's new frigates under the Squadron 2020 program. Its coastal defense batteries are containerized and launched from hidden forest or island positions. The NSM, on the other hand, is spreading rapidly across NATO navies. It equips Fridtjof Nansen-class frigates, Skjold-class fast attack craft, and truck-mounted coastal batteries in Poland and Norway. Finland recently joined the NSM club, ensuring interoperability across the Nordic coastline. 
The difference in deployment philosophy is telling. RBS-15 is rooted in national defense, a Swedish-made missile guarding Swedish waters. NSM is about coalition defense, a Nordic missile designed for joint NATO operations. If the RBS-15 is the heavyweight boxer, the NSM is the fencer. The Swedish missile relies on brute force and a robust radar seeker to punch through jamming and armor. The Norwegian missile avoids detection entirely, slipping beneath the radar horizon until it's too late. In a dense environment like the Baltic, both have merit. RBS-15's radar seeker is better for open water engagements, where targets are large and clearly defined. NSM's infrared seeker is superior near coastlines, where radar clutter is high. The NSM's imaging seeker also allows it to identify ships visually, reducing the risk of fratricide, critical in a congested maritime theater. In terms of survivability, NSM's stealth and evasive flight path give it an edge. In terms of punch, RBS-15's heavier warhead delivers greater kinetic and explosive impact. The balance between them mirrors the classic trade-off between speed and subtlety, force versus finesse. Beyond combat performance, these missiles symbolize two industrial strategies. Saab's RBS-15 anchors Sweden's long-standing goal of defense self-sufficiency. Kongsberg's NSM reflects Norway's strategy of integration, building a niche system that plugs into allied ecosystems. This duality strengthens the Nordic region as a whole. Rather than competing, the two systems complement each other. RBS-15 provides local firepower and depth. NSM ensures interoperability and stealth. Together, they form a layered deterrent network. Coastal batteries with NSM for early interception, Corvettes with RBS-15 for follow-up strikes, and joint NATO targeting to synchronize both. The future points toward even deeper integration. Finland's entry into NATO creates a continuous arc of coastal defense from Norway's Arctic fjords to the Gulf of Finland. As data links from Global Eye, AEW, and C aircraft and ground radars at Sayok Bodo fuse into one network, either missile could be queued to fire within seconds of target detection. The sensor to shooter chain, not the missile itself, will decide who dominates the Baltic. In a limited conflict, say, a Russian surface group entering the Gulf of Finland, RBS-15 batteries could engage from coastal islands while NSM batteries from Poland or Norway flank the target from the south. The result is a multi-vector killbox, one missile attacking from a radar visible direction, the other approaching low and silent from an unexpected bearing. In a protracted war, industrial capacity becomes decisive. Saab can produce RBS-15 domestically at high volume, while Kongsberg benefits from multinational contracts and U.S. co-production for the Joint Strike Missile, the air-launched version. That means sustained supply on both sides of the Atlantic, ensuring the Nordic Alliance never runs out of precision firepower. So, who rules the Baltic? The answer is neither missile alone. The winner is the network that connects them. The modern maritime battlefield is not about single platforms, it is about integration, coordination, and shared data. RBS-15 gives the Nordic Navy striking endurance and destructive depth. NSM provides stealth, precision, and alliance-wide flexibility. Together they ensure that any hostile fleet entering the Baltic does so under constant threat, visible or unseen. For the Nordic region, these sea killers are not just weapon systems, but symbols of a strategic shift, from neutrality to deterrence, from national defense to regional integration. Under the northern skies, the Baltic has become a testbed for modern maritime warfare, and in that test, the Nordic shield is holding firm.